extra message and where do they go from here? Especially as far as the small champion pool that we already thought was going to be an issue. And I feel like these are incredibly hard to predict because a champion that didn't get picked or banned last game in Jace is just suddenly thrown in as the first ban for SKT. So already uh, trying to mix a lot up. All right, what else happens next? So Ash Syndra Casio is what Samsung banned last game. Nidley, MF, and Rise. MF is one of the questions for me, and maybe the Ash as well. Olaf banned away by SK Telecom. Don't want to give that first rotation red side to Samsung, and of course the fact Ambition 5-0 on that champion. Yeah, and there's also the added question of whether or not SKT want Bengi to play Nidalee again, or if they have to ban it on the blue side, or if Samsung thinks he's respectable enough on the Nidalee to ban it. So that also cuts down on the potential bans. With Olaf already out of the table, the difference between the next best farming jungler is so vast. So many mid laners are getting through uh, because of these changes, though, and because of the kind of expected uh, last ban there. So I'm very curious to see what we'll get through. I, if Rise, Rise is probably going to get through now. And both of these guys have had very good performances on the Rise. But, but Nidalee next one? The yeah, well, jungler. This is, this is SKT forcing Samsung to ban Nidalee almost because they're really trying to make Samsung's pregame plan irrelevant as far as the ban phase goes. I like what they're doing here, putting the pressure on Samsung in the ban phase. The Lee Sin also very highly prioritized and could very well be picked up now. We'll see if they will go for a first jungle pick after the three bands of Arvian sunk into that role. Samsung opted for a blue side Zyra first pick. It is open and available once more. This time though, MF is as well. So does that dissuade you from picking it? Obviously, pressure on the top lane, the jungle pool as well. So there's pressure in multiple lanes here. Yeah, both of these uh, support players have definitely put in some time on Misfortune. And that is definitely a very scary counter pick. But yeah, that rise I was talking about rears his mm -hmm. head. Faker, we may get to see him uh, play one of his most famous champions. Yeah, he crushed all of Worlds with it last year. He was the only dude playing Rise, and then he had a bunch of big games. Get scarce finals. this year, right? And it's his most played in solo queue on the North American server, but this is the first time he will actually be playing the rework Wise in competitive, so very excited to see it. Hope he uses his skin, though he's not famous for using just, skin. It's, I, it's, just, it's one of those things you'd love to see. Uh, we haven't seen that uh, tumble on stage just yet. All right, Kobe, a million dollar question. What is the next round of picks here for Samsung? I mean, I, I like the hovers that they're already hovering right now, just because, like you talked about, with the Misfortune up, Zyra also does drop in priority. Uh, and the speed boost and shielding of the Karma did prove to be extremely important uh, for those mid-game plays. It's also cute what's going on here right now, because just because Samsung has picked Karma doesn't mean they can't pick Zyra or counter a Zyra with the Misfortune, because they can always throw it back. So it means SKT have to be very careful about locking in a Zyra if they want a Jin Zyra lane, because Samsung can turn right around and give him an MF if Crown was to play Karma, which is not one of his main champions. Yeah, and I think the, the thinking here also was, you know, even though the jungle pool is being pinched right now with a lot of bans, Ambition has been very willing to play that Rek'Sai, like so many other junglers, uh, and will and could very easily just go with either the Rek'Sai or the Skarner, one of those tanks for the front line. I still do think that Samsung are going to go with one of those sort of standard sturdy team comps where they got the front line uh, to protect the Caitlyn for later in the game. Especially when you see how well Rula played that late game. Um... You, know, you can take a look at that 90 caliber Nets and Flash. It ended up costing him towards the end of the game. Poppy's still up for QV as well and some options for Samsung. Ambition has been practicing Kindred on a solo queue account. It's going to be locked in, which Ooh. is the first Kindred we've seen at Worlds. All right. The last guy I saw playing this was Maple in the LMS finals over there. So that is an old pick there. I actually think it's a decent pick against Lee Sin here. Especially, you know, if it is going to be a long game. The, the Kindred is going to be a huge DPS threat. We'll see if, uh, you know, Karma's going to be on triple duty now. A very high DPS backline for him to keep protected. No that... front line for Samsung yet, though, but you can anticipate, obviously, a Poppy or similar in the yeah. top lane? Or would we maybe go something more poke or different? I think we don't know, and I like the fact that Samsung has given Cubey the counter pick in the top lane. SKT in their series against Rox almost always left Duke for the very last pick, so they're going to go something kind of safe like Nar. That means Cubey could cannon into it if he wants to have the lane advantage, if they lock in the NAR. Yeah, and also remember that the Kindred with the ultimate, since we haven't seen it in so long, does provide a lot of extra security for that backline to rely upon as well. And mm -hmm. since 
they have so much damage, a lot of the Kindred yep. is fighting over the territory of the ultimate. If you have the extra damage to push them off of it, then that could be huge. And there's that cannon for the flanks, uh, but also the 1v1 potential. Insta-lock cannon. Uh, Jat, I think your words were uh, pick in game two stronger early game. I feel yeah. like they've done that. Well, it's about having the shoving lanes in as many lanes as possible. And I think the Cassiopeia Rise is a skill matchup, but the Kennen should be able to shove, and the Karma Caitlyn should be able to shove. And how fitting is it that he goes back to the Kennen pick? The Kennen pick, one of the biggest improvements that Qve made, practicing a bunch in solo queue for the Gauntlet, which got them here to Worlds. And now they're at the last leg in the finals, down one game, looking to make it work again. And it's a really tricky team composition that Samsung's pulling out here. So they will need team practice on the Kindred lately as well, because this is five squishy champions. This isn't that sturdy tank line that they had previously. So they're going to have to be able to play pretty fast if they're able to get a lead, if they want to close out this game. It also does bring up all those, you know, plays around objectives because Ambition has been so good with his smite. Now you have to also take into account, is he going to Kindred ultimate, mm -hmm. bait my smite out, and then you wait for the duration uh, as Smithy did at MSI. Well, going to be a lot of questions that SKT have to answer. And also, can Samsung pull this team composition off? You guys at home, jump onto Twitter. Let us know the big moments of tonight using the hashtag World's Big Plays. Also, check out the 360 degree streams over on lolesports.com. You can actually check us out. Uh, jumping up and down now as we load into game two. SK Telecom have got themselves a 1 0 advantage over Samsung Galaxy. And Cuve loads up with his 3 0 cannon. Let's see if he can lead the way and even the series at the end of game two. Plus, we got Faker's Rise. Like, we're, we're just hey, jumping over that is, one. Hey, yes. the skin. Championship Cup. So, I guess he'll wear his own clothes. On his I think back. That's, that's the way it, it works out, right? Honestly, though, this does play into our story of SKT at this world. They've been the most outspoken, the most confident that we have ever seen them. This is a team that is used to winning the championship. Yeah, and Faker's going to want to get enough skins so his entire champion pool can have SKT. Which would champion. be every single champion, honestly. Yeah. This guy plays Aurelia in the mid lane. He played Bachelor Yi in the mid lane. Uh, Riven popularized. He played Olaf in the mid lane at Worlds last year. Many of those picks were. All right, well, let's take a look at the level one here because no deep wards this time around. No scouting of the jungler starts. Minions have spawned. We'll see if there's any sort of, you know, top laners faking, taking damage from Krugs, trying to... Uh, play those mind games of making the enemy guess where they've started. I want to take a look at how this early game plays out because Samsung fell very far behind by the time we hit that 15 minute mark and they cannot afford to do the same thing with this team composition. Yeah, and it actually happened because Faker was able to get an early shove in the mid lane and get a deep ward to find Ambition in the jungle. They also had a ward at the very beginning of the game to find him in the jungle. So the first ward isn't there this game, but there's a very early pink actually. Exactly, from Samsung again. They did it last game, they did it this game. Pink ward before the minion spawn. Crown goes over there. All right, I'm actually kind of disappointed in Bangi. I didn't see, he doesn't have his SKT skin. Where's the coordination, boys? He's also going for number three, Hawk out PC. There we go. Going to get his own, uh, own skin again this time around. Um, I want to take a look at just how Crown handles himself on this Casio because his Victor last game was as to be expected. And this time around, now has to perform at that same level, but on what is actually a fairly technical champion when it comes to dodging all of those skill shots and landing those petrifying gazes. Yeah, and Crown has actually been really good at Cassiopeia in the laning phase, specifically at dodging ganks from enemy teams. He has the cleanse here, so normally the Rise Lee Sin is an incredibly potent two-man gank because you get the Rune Prison and Lee Sin can automatically land the Q. But here, Crown's going to have to make sure he can cleanse if they go for that, and then he's going to have to play more passive in the next game. And we do want to touch on, you know, the changes to Kindred where the marks are even more important with their damage scaling. Going for the early scuttle here and grabbing it. Already off to a good start there for Ambition on the Kindred. Our new flavor pick. We have to have a surprise here in, in each best of five as we move forward. Ooh, actually, what he did there, I think he pulled the minions far enough to, so that Ambition was yep. able not to drop in the Fog of War, but I think he just revealed himself there. So the question mark did go down, and it looks like he gave up a little bit of info. Yeah, but he took a lot of harass on the minion wave just to cry, try and freeze it towards this turret. Faker now getting a little bit more aggressive to make sure the wave hits the turret and can then bounce back. 
both of these two mid laners do excel at getting the minion wave in the right place. So you always have a chance of stacking up minions to crash them in the turret, but you spend a small amount of time in basically danger of ganks. <laughs> Great delay there by Crown just at the end. And it was in game one where Faker actually built up a 10 CS advantage by having a back timing advantage over Crown. He's on another word, he can get stopped again. And does, Miasma again. Crown oh. with some gentle love taps to the two-time world champion Faker. He got a solo kill in the previous game. Let's see if he can do it again. Plus 10 CS already, and Faker's gonna lose a good chunk of this, the tower, it looks like. Significant delay, but you can see that Faker knows he has to go back and get his tier early. So he's committed to that recall, does go and get it off. That CS lead, though, in the mid lane should be a problem. Yeah, but we've been focusing on the mid lane. The top lane is going as expected. Cubay shoving in Duke and harassing him a substantial amount up there. And this is buying time for Ambition, who also picked up the first mark. Now he may go for a dive. He's clearing the Grom first, especially if Lee Sin gets shown. It's going to be a dive. Bangi is focused on taking away the mark on the bottom side of the map. Uh, there are no wards that will see him there, although he did pass by the pink, so they know about where he is. That's why Ambition is continuing to counter jungle. Uh, because of that early pink ward, so much value. Yeah. Going to be two camps stolen away. But Benki, actually getting some deep wards for himself. Good advantage in the first five minutes for Samsung. Plus 20 CS in the top lane for Cuve. Duke's already teleported back. I'll see if Cuve decides to do the same. Small lane advantage for Crown in the bottom and trading down bottom for JJ and Ruler. Caught by CC. Trades a couple autos, but Bang and Wolf, they turn this one around. Nice 90 cal into the headshot shots. And this is where the Samsung lane needs to be careful because they do not have the sustain that Wolf has. So while they could get shove on early, when they lose the shove, they're actually a very vulnerable lane. All they have to do is split because the mid and the top lane are winning very heavily for Samsung. We do really need to touch again on that jungle though because such a big advantage from Ambition in the jungle because they've been able to track him with the early pink ward. That was two camps that were stolen away. He also smited the wolf. So you get to leave that wolf spirit there and they saw him again. Yeah. Now the Vision though. just slingshotted back a little bit. Bang cleared the pink ward. Ambition got spotted out. Oh, damage down. Crown's throwing out the poison with those twin fangs. Good shield from Faker. He gets away with his life. It's the same one versus two. Meanwhile, though, it gives, again, full control over this mid lane to Samsung to push it up. They get another Scuttle Crab that is marked for Ambition. But uh, Bangi saw him exit into the Fog of War on the top side of the map, trying to make a counter play on the bottom side. If Bengi can get level six, he would have a much more threatening gank. He can't yet, as he's have ward control in the jungle, but no wolves to spawn. He might get level six off the wolves based on his experience bar. Then he would have threat for a bottom lane gank. Just warding up and trying to make that bottom lane as safe as possible. Not able to have that same sort of early impact. Samsung plus a thousand gold just from the farm already. I think that's to be expected though, when you look at the team compositions and how the lane is played out. I think credit to Samsung, but they need to do more to have this advantage going into the mid game. Yeah, I think not quite to this degree, especially in the mid lane, mm -hmm. you know, and how important those recall interrupts were from Crown on Faker for the early stages. We'll see how this does develop though, because early magic resistance now on Cassiopeia as well, makes Crown really confident in taking those trades with Faker. Yeah, I've talked to a number of mid laners about the Cassiopeia versus Drive matchup because historically it was Cassiopeia favored. But with the Rise rework, who has more utility in being able to shield himself in a longer range on his Q for wave clear, it does turn into a very slightly favored Cassio matchup, but not something where you're winning by 15 to 20 CS against Faker. Helps out when Crown is able to interrupt the laning pattern. I, I'm looking at Bang and Wolf pushing up very heavily in that bottom lane. Teleport and Fresh slicing apart. Maelstrom a little bit away. Ambition potentially in some trouble. Round Warp actually. Ambition's gonna get the camp and back out. Remember, Kindred here gonna scale very nicely as well. And he is already up to three now as he goes back to farm. Trading farm with Lee Sin uh, is definitely an optimal situation for him, especially since the Samsung lanes are in such a good spot, winning by themselves. Yeah, and we talk so much about Samsung's story of how they got here in the gauntlet, and one thing that happened is they became a much more aggressive team who, when they could get an early game lead, would just win it quite quickly. And that was with the Kennen-type compositions. 
and when you already have three stacks on the Kindred, they have the snowball potential if they can start getting these things going with the 1,200 gold beat already from the laning phase. And the thing to watch for with that snowball are those wards for QV to teleport in on. As of right now, use it to get back to lane for more lane dominance. Ambition got the blue. Thanks. That's one of the first messed up blue hand I've seen at Worlds. Teams have been much better about doing it. Big mistake right there. Well, jungler is now going to be meeting toe to toe. Level Check. seven advantage for Ambition. Gets a ward down. Lambs Respite is available. Tidal Wave captures both of Samsung Galaxy's bottom Ambition with the Lambs Respite. It's first blood to Ambition. Body block on the first two shots from Wister. The third and the fourth. Oh, gets nobody. Beautiful. Now Fake is the target. Gets caught up by the red buff. Slowed down. Crown looking for. A target, they may want to go they for a more. dive. Crowd's full health with both summoner spells up. All summoner spells are up for SKT though. They're closing in, trying to push the minion wave first, and there goes the counter attack from Rise. The realm warp not going to be enough to get the range, but the flash does. Now, Faker and Wolf, they're in enemy territory, going to back away. The threat alone means no further engage. It's a one for one trade. What an impressive counter right there. They know the only way out is forward. They charge Core JJ and do grab the kill. But still, this game, the early game has been going so heavily in favor of Samsung and they retain that lead. Oh, great stun from Cube. Hop away from Duke. Means that there's no kill yet. Actually, Duke's gonna Mega Gnar out. Crown's decided to pick a fight. Exhaust is already used. Miasma's put on the floor and Crown. Wow. Lenses away, Four no kill yet. summoner spells He burned. burns every summoner as well as knocking the back. And just to rewind a little bit, there was so much awesome that happened in that fight. Ambition getting alley -oop towards Faker only to cast his Lamb's Respite to save him. And then the next man up blocking of the Jin Ultimate was perfect by Samsung. And they maintained their early game lead. Ambition wants to make his long-awaited chance at Worlds count. They want to dive Cuban. So does Faker, though. You're in the last trade. Duke Mega Nod out, Force Cubase Flash. This should be an easy, and easy no dive. Ultimate. Here uh -oh. comes Ambition as well. Knocked against the wall. Faker is gifted a kill. And they just made that look easy. And we talk about the ebb and flow of the map. There's no counter play here really uh, open for Samsung. The only thing they're getting is a ward deep in the red side jungle. But again, let's look at this ambition play. Yeah, he's able to get a lot of damage on Bengi, but then the alley with right to Faker. But he lands, is able to cast his Lambert's fight, and then Bengi can't make it in. Kills as him as he's in. trying to cross the line. You shall not pass. To get in. Then here again, body blocking Rai is so important because of the overloads. Ruler stands in front, uses the heal early, so he has more healthy Jin ultimate. Uh, last shots don't do as much, and this is the beautiful yeah. counter attack. Right here, they're trying to make a four-man dive happen, but Faker just zooms forward on a core JJ, and they're able to take advantage of the long range of Jin as well to assist, and that completely stops any game. 200 gold now separates these two teams. So two kills for Faker in the last couple of minutes, and Ambition is up to four stacks on that Kindred passive. The kill into Bengi, plus first blood gold in his pocket as well. Those CS advantages have been chipped away from. As you can see, it's an even game mid, and Duke, while yes, it's still 20, uh, relieved a lot of pressure with that dive up in the top lane. No flash for Cube in theory to make him think twice about pushing so far forward. Yeah, because this matchup actually can swing back to be Nar favored if he's able to get Spectre's Cal and Frozen out. So it's very important that Cube stay ahead of the curve there. Incredibly important gank in. The ebb and flow Kobe was talking about, it was a little bit enabled by Crown staying bottom lane to burn the four summoner spells. Now they're trying to get it back. Those what? four summoner spells are down. Here comes a cannon with an ultimate. Cheeky play there over the back of the dragon pit. Pink ward so they know there's nobody to see them. Bang and Wolf have no summoner spells. The teleport's coming down. Some party. It Five will be a mega down. Down. Slicing Maelstrom stuns SK Telecom. Duke Mega Nars out. They've joined the one for one. Ambition doesn't get the respite down. Faker realm warps in, gets the reply kill. It ends up being a two for two. SKT can equalize plays that no other team can equalize right there. It looked like a five-man party for Samsung, and it's just a two for two. Absolutely insane. Faker crashes the party as another kill to the list for him, and that goes horribly wrong for Samsung. Let's take a look at the setup. Look how quickly Faker starts to rotate from mid lane. Nar immediately channeling teleport onto the turret, and extra turret shot taken there as well. Let's watch how they actually turn this around, though, because Cube looks like he hits everyone with the ultimate. Ambition, though, it doesn't, ult. doesn't alt here. 
with the fourth shot and the Gnar jumping on top of him. That hurts. And then Faker is also here to clean up the second It's a kill. super difficult situation to be in as the Kindred because you want to get the kill right before you ultimate. And there's a split second there, you know, to try and activate it afterwards. And that would also save the Gnar. So uh, he did get the kill first, which it was a necessary part. And we talk about it all going wrong. It was a two for two, but the investment to that play was so high by Samsung with the teleport as well as Cannon Ultimate. And that allows Bengi to try and move into the jungle a little bit here. Not gonna challenge Ambition though, and still just making his way. No flash up in the top lane, no slicing Maelstrom either. I think this would be risky if they tried to dive it, but they could. Look at all the information that SKT is working with though. You know, as much as uh, we talk about the play oh, being set up nice here. Game. Kicked into the wall, and that just looks so, once again, so easy, so well executed. And they know they can cleanly go for that 2v2. Ace in the hole's available for Rula. Oh, oh, oh. The exhaust, the flash, the heal. Rula's face palming. He's flashed forward aggressively multiple times. This time it hurts him. SKT making informed decisions. They have wards seeing every member of Samsung, whereas Samsung Why has invade? nothing. Ambition, can he get the lambs respite? Yes, but it won't be enough to get the kill just yet. Jumps back away, dance of arrows, and the three-man SKT, they shut him down. And that's the poise of SKT. When they can get this Rift Herald after that kill on Ambition, that takes away Cubey's ability to split push. Also, you're going to be more poised when you know where the enemy is. Look at the wards by SKT. That is also going to be a Rift Herald buff for Duke in the split pushing battle. Kennen, yes, is going to be great for those team fights trying to flank in, but. Uh oh. Core cool. JJ taking fire. Aqua Prison uh -oh. locks up Core JJ and whispers fourth shot. Bang! You're down. That's three solo deaths in a row by Samsung. Ruler trying to make a play in a 1v2 situation. Ambition doing a blind invade and getting classed by three people. And then Core JJ on support karma is up too far in the lane when SKT are able to finish that kill. Those mistakes can't happen against SKT. When it rains, it pours. And it's so hard to work back a losing vision fight because SKT had so much advance warning. Samsung, every move they're trying to make to try and get any sort of deep vision for themselves, immediately countered, immediately stopped. And after those solo deaths, it's SKT that immediately take control. 2,000 gold up. To Samsung's credit, they got the first Mountain Drake, the next one's spawning, and they are trying to once again set up some ring of control around this pit. Teleport not available for Cubay. That is important if SKT tried to contest. I agree with that. Not being able to make it with the cannon could spell a Drake over to SKT. This is also something the analyst desk talked about of the flow of SKT series. First game is close, second game isn't as close, and third game would be a stomp. Samsung need to control that just onslaught from SKT and find a way to equalize this game and get some positive plays going for them. They do have a lot of damage on their team. And with this uh, second Mountain Drake, yeah. Samsung would have a huge threat of just burning through Baron. Their, their entire team outputs Can damage. Casio. So th this would be an incredible, even two members of this team could sneak a Baron after it spawns. So SKT have to be very wary of keeping up that vision game and continuing to be diligent about putting those wards. Good Dance of Arrows, sidestep. And Ambition may be able to make it away, but not enough from Faker. Uh -oh. Tagged by two shots already, uses the flash. Remember, Lamb's Respite still available. Dance Ooh. of Arrows over the Rift, uh, Scuttler. But still, summon a spell wasted, really. So many abilities being dodged here, and Bengi isn't able to finish off that ward. Pink wards do regenerate now, so he's got to get back in there if he wants to finish it off. And this is, again, another game where you're seeing the mechanical outplays every single oh, no. member. Level 11, 12 rather on Poor Faker. Round Warp comes in. Cubase got Slicing Maelstrom and Flash. Got no minions under the tower. Got an approach about forward. Duke takes a turret shot. Flash forward for oh, Cubase. Looking oh. for the lightning shuriken. Shut down Duke with the boomerang. It's incredible the speed at which SKT make their calls as soon as the information comes in. They say, oh my goodness, Ambition, Crown. They're invading our jungle bottom side. Faker, what does he do? Immediately moves top to go make the play with his ultimate on rise. They camp that side. They're going to get the first turret on top of it. And SKT so willing to play around Duke this game. He was picked into a bad matchup. Samsung saved their last pick for Cubay. But that's about all they did for Cubay because Ambition has been down on the bottom side. And that's 
the third unique champion SKT have sent top lane. This time it's Faker to help out with Duke. Duke takes the turret early. Not the cleanest of ganks because Duke takes so much damage, but then the double flash right there prevents Cubay from being able to get in. Faker can follow and finish off the kill. I mean, oh, there we go. <laughs> well, Ambition's gonna buy some time. There's a little bit of support from Cubay coming out, but it's not gonna be enough just yet. Ambition dances around. Mounting Dread, Wolf Frenzy, throw everything at Faker and it's not gonna count. 3-0-3. Faker is a monster. First game on the reworked Rise, and he's showing absolute mastery. Yeah. No one was in doubt of Faker being able to play Rise just because he hadn't played it so far at Worlds. They have really taken control of that quadrant of the map right now. The Gnar is building up towards Frozen Mallet right now, and Cube has really fallen behind the curve that you don't want to fall behind as a cannon, not to mention the magic resistance that SKT is able to build up just casually with the Abyssal Scepter and the Hexman. Samsung do have the teleport on Cubay to try and make you know a play on the other side of the map to get back into this. But even if they do that and they leave top side, uh, Duke will take his toll or follow with two level advantage on the NAR. Well, we talked in picks and bands about how this team composition from Samsung Galaxy was hard to execute. It's significantly harder when you put yourself in a position to get punished. Now they're behind in gold. If you look at the mini-map, more pressure! Oh no. Ula's gonna flash away from the tidal wave. Poor JJ's already used his flash. And he gets shut down by Bang, who's now on a killing spree. And to elaborate a little bit more on your point about, you know, how hard this uh, comp is to execute, if you look at the squad from Samsung, they have so much damage, yet their whole team fight relies on these two big ultimates. The only the hard CC that they have is the Cassiopeia and the Kennen ultimates. Those have to hit multiple targets, mm -hmm. have to lock people in place, because there is no tank for this team until Cube is able to, you know, get his Zonias and buy some time that way. It's all about Ambition's ultimate, which has been down. Yeah, I'm not available. Look at that. Yeah, and it would also require them to be able to set up at all. But SKT has been so far ahead of the pace of this game. Ever since it was close at the beginning, SKT just pick after pick. They kill Ambition, and now Duke about to hit Meganar to try and zone him off the turret. Yeah, Cube potentially could turn around the engage with that Maelstrom. The tower doesn't fall in the mid lane, though. All the pressure from Duke is allowing the rest of SKT to set up. Deadly flourish from Bank. Won't find a target, and the tower will allow... The pressure on the tower allows SKT to then just reposition, steal away the Sentinel. And Ruler could be a threat. Sonic Wave, uh -huh. well, Ward Hop over, good 90 caliber. There's no flash available in Pengi. Uh, doesn't want to go too deep. Not worth the risk at this stage with the lead they've accrued. Exactly. No need for SKT to take any, any even slightly low percentage play or waste any abilities right now. I mean, honestly, if especially if we look back at how this game has gone, uh, there's not too many points where we can uh, super heavily fault Samsung. Their play they set up bottom with five players was well set up. It was an intelligent you know, flip over the ball there from Ambition. It was a pink ward that they teleported on, so they knew there was an ward in that bush at least. The problem is SKT's ability to instantly react to any of these plays, and they make it look like a bad play by turning it around. And the map play has been so much stronger from SKT this game. One thing that we kind of noticed about Faker before this Rise game was how he would play to the mid lane and only look to pressure down that turret and how he wasn't necessarily looking to roam, very rarely taking teleport. But on this game with Rise, he has been very willing to roam, realm warp in to get his side lanes and team ahead. And interestingly enough, he actually lost his mid lane turret in this game almost in exchange for all the kills and assists and map pressure that he's picked up for his team. He's playing extremely confidently right now on the rise, and he's showing it. I mean, he, he wore his own skin, one of the extremely rare times where he actually uses a skin, and it's in the finals here, looking to get his third chance in a cup. 5,000 gold deficit for Samsung Galaxy. The next dragon is once again a Mountain Drake. That's the third of the game. And Samsung have teleported and Cubate. They've got two already, and there's Baron spawned, but they're not going to risk that just yet. Looking at the minimap, pressure going up towards that lane. Yeah, you can tell that SKT have this in mind. They know that there are already two Mountain Drakes on Samsung. Samsung do have a lot of damage and convert it down. That's why Duke is hovering around the Baron while they go for this Drake. They're covering their weak side of the map. All right, while the Dragon was being taken, uh, taking a look at some cooldowns that have been used. Bang 
fired his curtain call. Crown has used, uh, I believe, both uh, Petrifying Gaze and Flash as well. So there was yep. some sort of exchange in the mid lane where Crown is now down a summoner spell. And Faker just gets 75% of that tower. Rate. It's just relentless pressure, and Bengi's behind Core. Yeah, Core JJ's in so much trouble. The tidal wave will hold him in place. Exhaust buys enough time for him to flash to safety, but the tower goes down. Faker's realm warped in looking for Ruler. Lamps for Spike will buy some time. Faker's caught in a trap, takes a lot of damage for his troubles. And Lambs Respite saves Ruler's life, plus the Summoner heal. Once again, Summoner spells blown, towers falling in multiple lanes, and SK Telecom, in SKT fashion, taking control of Game 2 more confidently than Game 1. Yeah, and you think about the way Samsung would want to try and get back in this game, it would be a flank teleport from the cannon. But the amount of map pressure that Samsung has is so low that Wolf is almost always going to have his exhaust for the cannon, and the forward targets like Duke are always at full health in the split push game, so more controlling action in game one. They've got the exhaust, plus they have the Lee Sin kick from Bangy, which can utilize that way, you know, or utilize to push people off of the Kindred Ultimate if they need to, you know, chase down Samsung into their own territory. But once again, it's the same story we talked about last game where the vision just creeps in the mark the map the entire map starts to become dark look at they're trying to just place defensive wards in their own jungle in the first bush and he almost gets killed for it you know ward jump flash for the Good right side of the and even if they don't get the kill it still buys them time to take down that mid lane turret and faker is able to burn a bunch of uh, ultimates right there by getting the kindred ult out just means Samsung Galaxy are once again playing from behind. In game one, they were down 5,000 gold at 25 minutes. That is now 6,500 gold in game two. And for SKT, I think they still need to be very careful with their vision. They still need to not overextend, because if Cube can find a miracle teleport, mm -hmm. there is a lot of damage that could follow on if a front line or a back line can be out of position. The thing is, at this point in the game, if Cube teleports, it has to be, be like from the fountain or something because he cannot 1v1 this Nar. Duke will smash him in the 1v1. Duke will push up and he will keep him pinned down at that bottom turret. So it removes so much threat from the Ken and teleport in that case. And if Samsung do make a move, it's kind of an all-in move where yeah. their backs are against the walls. They don't have much else and uh, very risky. I agree. He also couldn't 1v1 Baker. He's just not in the position where he has the threat. So he has to be in so clean, most likely flash over the roots and peel that SKT would be able to throw at them. And that's where Wolf's Nami could come in clutch as well, because if QV teleports into a flank, all Wolf would have to do is tidal wave the bulk of the Samsung team, and that will give them enough time to hopefully kill QV. So we're kind of stacking the advantages in SKT's favor here, and it's looking pretty grim for Samsung. As SKT do every time they appear in an international final, they are on the cusp of another matchup win here at this game and they've got all the tools to do so that frozen mallet black king but once again duke playing the split push once again itemizing at this stage in the game to dominate a side lane and to maintain map control for SKT. because so they've just had such fantastic vision such fantastic uh, you know pressure across the map at all stages samsung once again are going to have to play their turtle mode with the uh, caitlin here as the baron being taken there's not really any any counterplay here from Samsung. It's a completely dark, dark map. They would have to do some crazy uh, move to even go get, and it would probably cost them a lot of their lives. So yeah. defensive play is, again, the name of the game. Yeah, and this is immaculate play by SKT. After the early game where Samsung looked like they were trying to snowball, as soon as SKT halted that, they've been turning it right back around. And here's a Realm Warp. All right, Realm Warp's going to deliver Faker and Duke. It should be enough just for the tower once this minion lane, minion wave comes back up. Cube with the proto belt got away, and, and you know to go back to that point, SKT, immaculate play. Bengi once again starting. I think we were talking about how only if they lost the thing, maybe Blank would start a game. And Bengi on this Lee Sin, three one and two. While he didn't necessarily need to gank, he got some kills. He was in the right place at the right time. Bengi's got to be one of those magnificent anime stories of a League of Legends player that we have had ever. Because this guy, you know, he also is going for a third championship. It's not yep. just Faker. Uh, and he was he was on the bench for so long. People called him washed up. They wrote him off. They're like, he, he's just sitting there because, you know, Blank is still new and they're only using him for the first game to scout. But 
Bengi has been such a huge instrumental part in the victories of SK Telecom here in the later stages here at Worlds. And you look at the junglers they've had to go through. Peanut, he was 3-0 against in the semifinals. And Ambition in game one, Bengi was way up in farm against Ambition. In this game, he's equalizing the farm of the Kindred in the late game and getting picks like this. Oh, the oh. full shot misses, but Bengi doesn't care. He jumps in. Oh, while we were looking at that top lane, Faker had a three-level advantage over Crown. Crown has just oh equalized. It's now 17-15. But look how easy it is for SKT to just push this. It's, it's 10,000 gold before 30 minutes. Yeah, and they make it look easy because yeah. obviously this isn't easy. Otherwise, every team would do it. They have so much <laughs> control with the wards in this game, and they're always all on the exact same page when they're going to make these plays quick shot. That's what's so impressive. That's so unfortunate for Samsung Galaxy in their final for the first time with this roster. Not even really able to advance through the LCK playoffs, but they ran the gauntlet. The fairy tale story and the amount of pressure for these guys that they've put on themselves. Unfortunately, they faltered. Three solo deaths uh, is what allowed SKT to just start the snowball. Definitely can be very uh, happy with their run here at Worlds though, and they are getting you know, that experience on Ruler and the big stage, and getting some of those nerves out as far as the play. And especially Crown has, has really shown up and, and impressed a, a huge amount of people, definitely getting his team out there as well. Yeah, but this game also kind of goes to show uh, the momentum for SKC, because the first Baron they picked up in game one was, you mentioned, a very low Baron power play, 2,800 gold. That was when Samsung had a lot of wave clear champions. Here, they had... Still wave clear champions, but SKT is up to nearly 6,000 on this Baron power play. With all that being said, though, we're one and a half games in the world. Well, that's a dead ambition once oh, again. Dear. Now Bang is going to be the target. The Esma tidal wave. Cube can't find anybody more. Slice of Maelstrom is down, and all of a sudden, Duke turns the pressure around. Bang, bang, unstoppable as Cube is shut down. Duke. Gonna be able to Mega Nar out not too long. Hops forward, looking for more. Oh. Poor JJ, kicked against the wall, locked against the wall. Duke Nars crown, petrifying gaze, not gonna be enough. And Duke will get popped, but just the GA. Round one from Faker will allow him to get a double kill onto Ruler at 30 minutes into the game. SKT. They still have to run back out and kill an inhibitor tower. <laughs> you can't help but just applaud SKT for that play because you call them a slower, methodical team, but when they have the advantage, they do know how to take it. Ace inside the base without clearing out the inhibitor turrets. They managed to get everyone in there, and they might push for the win here. Ambition left alone under the Nexus turrets against all of SKT's rune prison down. This time, gets the respite out, but it won't be enough. Oh. Cube's caught out, sent back to the fountain. The Samsung Galaxy, they cannot defend their Nexus. SK Telecom jumping forward for more. Core JJ on the steps of the fountain is killed by the...